Well, did the former UK Prime Minister David Cameron use his influence to gain undue favours for the now collapsed financial services company Greensill? The British government is launching an inquiry to establish the facts and has also called in the current Chancellor Rishi Sunak for questioning. Moba Nasser reports. Former UK Prime Minister David Cameron is in the hot seat. Lawmakers, including many from his own political party, want to know whether he tried to illegally sway government officials in support of Australian banker Lex Greensill and his company Greensill Capital. I think people have just got uh, questions that they need to satisfy themselves, about, including me, about uh, how this uh, supply chain finance stuff uh, is meant to, to work. I mean, I, I don't think that it's going on at uh, present anywhere in government, but I need to, we need to understand exactly what the intention was, how it came about, and that's what Nigel Boardman is going to do. Cameron sent several text messages to UK Chancellor Rishi Sunak and held meetings with other officials, asking them to give the firm access to funds in a government lending scheme. While he maintains his innocence, Cameron admits he should not have sent text messages to the Chancellor. There are important lessons to be learned here. As a former Prime Minister, I accept that communications with government need to be done through only the most formal of channels, so there can be no room for misinterpretation. He's already been cleared of any wrongdoing by the industry watchdog, the Registrar of Consultant Lobbyists. It says Cameron did not violate lobbying rules because he was an employee of Greensill, not a third-party consultant. But the company is itself under investigation for fraud. A supply chain financier, Greensill paid sellers on behalf of buyers charging a commission for its services. It then sold those loans on to other clients. Problems emerged when the company's insurers refused to underwrite more loans on its behalf over fears it had overstated its assets. Last month, the $4 billion company collapsed overnight and many of its clients, like the German city of Monheim, were fleeced out of their investments. The city has invested 38 million euros in fixed-term deposits at the Green Seal. We fear that money is now lost. We are preparing ourselves for insolvency proceedings, but we may have to go away empty-handed. Regulators are now investigating whether the company had been deliberately misleading its clients. And for Cameron, who's had ties with Greensill and its owner for many years, the findings could be damning. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. Well, for more on this, let's go to Dennis McShane, who joins us now from London. He's the UK's former Minister of State for Europe and a former Member of Parliament for the Labour Party. Welcome back to the programme, Dennis. Now, Greensill Capital, as we know, collapsed last month. It's been described as one of the biggest, most spectacular uh, failures of a global financial firm in about a decade, as if that wasn't bad enough. This story is quickly morphing into a political scandal, isn't it? Very much so. It's, it's, I've not seen anything like this. I want to be careful in the comparison since Watergate, where almost every week uh, there's a new sudden explosive revelation about the prime minister at the time, David Cameron, at the highest level of government, bringing in this Australian, uh, don't, I don't want to be rude about the man, I don't know anything about it, but he's a hell of a chancer, giving him a number 10 pass, and the head of the civil service, the most senior official in Britain, encouraging everybody to meet him. And now we've learned just this afternoon that the head of government procurement, the top, top man that oversees all the things that government buys, and that's billions of pounds, for eight years, he was a member of the board of this company and stood to make eight million pounds. I mean, the country is reeling from the revelations uh, now debate in Parliament that it's getting worse and worse. And UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has promised a swift inquiry into this very scandal, particularly just how Greensill Capital managed to secure UK government contracts. As you say, uh, former Prime Minister David Cameron uh, has been a lobbyist for Greensill. How much responsibility does uh, David Cameron bear in all this? After all, he was just doing his job and uh, apparently it was within the rules as well. There are no rules such as most people would understand them in this country. 
prime ministers in office, out of office, are meant to be men of honour. And David Cameron, when he was the prime minister, brought this man in. He shoved him in front of other departments, other ministers to say, give him contracts, give him contracts. And it was backed by, as I say, a man who since died, the former head of the civil service. And so now David Cameron has been really rather crudely lobbying. I mean, everybody might phone up former friends in government or uh, make a request for a meeting to argue something. But this is nonstop nagging, pestering texts, phone calls, drinks, flying out to sit in the desert sand with um, the uh, crown prince of Saudi Arabia to talk about this. I mean, it, it's just doesn't exist in British recent history. I mean, you know, prime ministers like Tony Blair, others, but Theresa May have gone off and made speeches to make some money and so on. But not this incredible pestering, 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 give my man big government contracts. No, never heard of that before. And for his part, David Cameron has defended his lobbying for Greensill Capital. Uh, he says that everything is within the lobbying rules as former Prime Minister, do you think there needs to be a, a root and branch overhaul of exactly what former MPs, what former ministers, what former Prime Ministers can do when they leave office? I think the whole country will be very comfortable with that. Let me stress, nobody's saying David Cameron's broken the law, but it's just the way he has behaved that's unacceptable. And Boris Johnson has set up an inquiry. The man running it is actually uh, on the government payroll as a non-executive director of one of the ministries. He was the man who, as a lawyer, who investigated the PPE contracts that were given to close friends of Conservative Party MPs last year. And a few years ago, as a very senior city lawyer, he said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with prime ministers lobbying and using their influence and access to try uh, and, and advance their interests. So nobody, I think, in the country takes this as a serious inquiry. It's you know, a whitewash brush under the carpet. And there's a real clamour for either a proper parliamentary inquiry, David Cameron, other people, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, who's in real trouble, real trouble, appearing in front of MPs and having to answer questions. It's quite, quite remarkable. I've never seen anything like it in my entire political life. And we understand the inquiry is due to report its findings uh, by the end of June. Until then, Dennis McShane, thank you again for joining us on the programme.